Good morning. <laughs> oh, today is the officially recognized Pentecost Sunday by the big churches. Those big churches, I will not attend. <laughs> not for want of trying. <clears throat> I've just experienced the second attempt at um, a woman trying to coerce me into the Roman Catholic fold and it's not going to happen. I lived my life, I'm a man of 64 years old and I've looked long and hard at the big organised churches. My background primarily initially was Church of England and I've utterly seen through them. And then I have looked at in fact becoming a Benedictine monk through the Roman Catholics. <clears throat> and then after years, actually, decades even, in fact, in my personal life, I realised, because I'd looked so closely, in fact, the monstrous iron fist of Roman Catholicism as it <coughs> exists now in the world. I'm afraid, as far as I'm concerned, it's a closed book. What God does with those people is up to God, nothing to do with me, in the same way that what he does with the Muslim or the Hindu or the Sikh or the Buddhist or the, the non-believer. It's not primarily my problem. Yes, I am a Christian, yes. I try to let the light of Christ shine through me in this dark world. I mean, it's if for no other reason, as it were, simply this, that if, if you join up in an organization which you know to be false, wrong, positively evil, and the obvious example is, is Hitler. Clearly he got a lot of followers, and deceived and whatever and whatever, I mean, one talks of uh, testing the spirits. Incidentally, I'm not experiencing any sort of um, inrush of the Holy Spirit today. I have experienced it. I do know what it is. And I am not <coughs> in um, sync with what's going on in the big organized churches around me throughout the world now, today. I utterly do not feel the Holy Spirit in me today, and I have experienced it. I do know what it is. And quite the reverse, in fact. It's <coughs> the reverse that keeps popping back into my head is from the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's actually what I'm experiencing. I just feel... <coughs> I just
Yes, so to. <laughs> Yuck! <laughs> what the? <laughs> More um, proper a word to find. <laughs> Hopefully, it will pass. It's a problem. I've experienced this twice in my life. I was engaged to a lass in Paris, very nice girl, woman. She'd been a nurse and then she got out of that and got into sort of business in aluminium in Paris, but spoke beautiful English and, you know, sort of upmarket girl. And she stood me outside a Roman Catholic church eventually after ooh, five years, probably, we've been together and said, either you become a Roman Catholic or that's the end of us. And that was the end of us. In a much lesser way, I've, I've experienced this of late with someone I know in Spain who's married and so on and so forth, but they thought they could <coughs> coerce me into Roman Catholicism. No chance. Yes, it means I'm alone, basically. It's much harder, it's so much easier to join, join up and become a card-carrying member of some group. But what about, I mean, I went to Peru and I kind of love the fact that at the market, a great big closed and closed market, with stalls and little old ladies in those beautiful, they wear these bolas in Peru. This was in Puno by Lake Titicaca and, and just a few little old herbs or something they're selling just around them. You know, grandmothers with their little grandchild there. And, but there was a shrine and candles lit. I, it's a very Roman Catholic country. Big, big cross on the hill. Same in Brazil, at, um, Sao Paulo, isn't it? With Christ, the great big statue of Christ, isn't it? And countless millions, over a thousand million practicing Roman Catholics. And there is this longing within to take communion as instituted by Christ in especially Luke chapter 22, the body and blood of Christ, bread and wine. So to, to go to Roman Catholic way of saying it, mass, to go to mass and share in the body and blood of Christ with other human beings. And I have to deny myself that. I have never, not once, ever taken communion in a Roman Catholic setting. I have in other settings, but basically I, I won't. Because if I feel, I'll go to a service sometimes, you know, you meet people and I, or whatever. I've, I've certainly done that. <coughs> and I actually had accommodation for two winters in a, a Methodist Central Hall in Allington in Staffordshire. So I would take communion with them and they have they practice something called open table. So you're not given the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> Are you good enough? To, to have the body and blood of Christ. And it was just sort of simple bread, just a slice of bread chopped up or whatever. And sherry wine sort of thing. Um, if you feel within yourself that, that it's appropriate for you to take communion, then so be it, just jolly will get on with it. Um, 
um, it's called Open Table. And I was there for over a year and a half. And I would attend their Sunday service regularly. Was that right? Regularly. Um, excuse me. Anyway, that's me rambling as usual. I don't know what to do about this. I'm going to stay true to what I believe is a path guided by Christ to God, come what may. The world can go and do its own thing. It's not a game, this. I'm a man of 64, as I've probably already said, and I've been at it all my life. <coughs> From the age of 14 or 15, I could look back and God was sort of calling me then, even then. So day by day, take up your cross and follow me each day. I've been at this all my life. My own personal relationship, which is the beauty of, of Christianity, is between oneself and God directly. No leaders involved. China hates it because you don't bounce straight to the, the great big human leader. <laughs> People actually uh, go direct to God and bypass any sort of human um, authority, and they, they don't like that, obviously. You get killed, actually, in China for being a Christian not careful. <coughs> so I can't sort of fix what other people do. But I am absolutely clear I will not join the monstrous hypocrisy of the current way things are within that organization of man, the Roman Catholic Church. No, that's not a very happy thought, is it? <coughs> well, it is and it isn't. I like to end on happy thoughts. <sighs> yes, the Holy Spirit does exist. I know from personal experience and it comes. It's not something you can ask. You can ask for it, but it's not something you can sort of conjure up. If God chooses to allow the Holy Spirit to come to you personally, individually, that's it. I see one of my films, films is rocketing up the, the charts. It's almost reached uh, 50 views. <laughs> the second coming of Christ, of Jesus Christ. Wonderful. So people must be finding it. I haven't found my channel particularly. <laughs> I'm lucky if I get two or three views sometimes. Christ will come again. There is absolutely no doubt or shadow of a doubt within me whether it happens in my lifetime. Well, that would be a wonderful blessing because we'd all know. Okay, it's in Acts, the passage about <coughs> at the end times, chapter 2, 3, this inrush of the Holy Spirit and people will have dreams and all of that. It's from the book of Joel, I think, in the Old Testament. And the whole world will just know, bang, just like that, because God is the boss. And he can do that sort of thing. So we mustn't lose hope. 
and we must live well must in my way of looking at these things as a Christian we ought to live each day in loving God through Christ in faithful hopeful loving obedience to God. Amen.